We've just watched Aliens for the first time. Is it really the best sequel ever made? Let's find out. Hello everyone. Welcome back. We are back. The Eye of the Storm podcast. Danny G, do you want to let the people know what we're doing? So this is Have You Seen, where we talk about a movie that some of us know well and others have just seen for the first time. This week we're talking about Aliens, the sequel to Alien, which we did a few weeks ago, which I've seen many times and both the two of you have just seen for the first time. So what are your impressions? I will say that this is my kind of movie, even though I still have a problem with like old movies because I feel like they have this problem where everything just seems slow. <laughs> I'll get into that more a bit later. But overall, I actually enjoyed my experience watching Aliens because like I said, this is my type of story. A group of people, or these are a group of soldiers, cocky, not knowing what the danger is ahead. And then once they're faced in front of the danger, they're put in a place where they're in a situation of survival. So that's my kind of drift, you know what I'm saying? That's my kind of story. And I really liked it. Um, I did actually feel like it was a, it was an unexpectedly good sequel. And I say that because what, I don't know, my first reaction to the first movie, I was like, yeah, this is, this is cool, it's good. I just don't understand why it was labeled one of the best horrors ever made that's why I was a bit confused and I'm I wouldn't say I'm still actually I'm still kind of with that same opinion but not as much because obviously I enjoyed Aliens too I did have its problems which I'll speak about later but um besides that I thought it was a really good second film like this is something I'd actually rewatch, and this is actually the first time I've said this for like an old movie this is actually a film that I'd actually rewatch because it's just like I said I just love group survival movies just love it i'm saying and hudson that guy was flipping funny but that's <laughs> we'll get into that later yeah that's my opinion this movie was fantastic it was great it was a good watch like i, I think it does a lot of really good things for a sequel in terms of like building on some of the previous taking the main character on a sort of a kind of new character arc as well that's built on some sort of the pre some of the previous movie uh, as well the action in it is, you know, pretty interesting, very entertaining. Uh, I feel like the aliens as well. Like, I feel like the aliens in this one are a lot more, like, menacing, a lot more, like, sort of, you know, um, scarier than what it was in the first movie uh, uh, as well. And, yeah, like, I'm same opinion of Jonathan. I don't really watch, like, these really old movies. But this, like, this, like they, they did a really good job of, sort of, you know, kind of, again, like, reintroducing you to the role, kind of, like, building it up, etc., and just kind of, like, really immersing you in, sort of, this alien universe. Um, one complaint was the little girl in the movie. She was a bit stiff. I know she's not, like, a huge, well, she's in the movie quite a bit, but she's not, like, sort of, you know, in front of the screen and sort of talking too, too much. But anytime she was, it was just a bit <laughs> jarring. But... Overall, I really enjoyed this movie. This is a this is a fantastic movie. This is a great sequel. So I take issue with the fact that you don't like Newt because Newt is precious and and wonderful. But it's 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 good to hear that that the two of you both like this. Was this what you expected from the Alien sequel, right? Like if if you watch our last mo uh, video on Alien, both of you were not terribly into it, and then I said it's not going to be a horror movie, and that's the only thing I told you about it, and that caught kind of caught your interest. Is that like what did you expect going into this, and how? Like the first half hour or so, well, how, how did that uh, come across to you? The first half hour, half hour was, again, a little bit, it was a little bit slow, not as slow as the first Aliens movie. But again, I started to like feel the pacing of it. And there's important things happening at the start of the movie, but it did feel slow. In terms of like expectations kind of going into it, I knew, like, like you said, I knew it was going to be different, but I didn't know which direction they were going to go with but in hindsight and knowing the sort of time period that this movie was taking place amongst sort of like kind of like the 80s 90s sort of action movies this and the other it probably makes sense that it sort of kind of went in direction uh, in this direction i think it came even even came like about like seven years sort of you know, after the original sort of aliens movie came out which probably influenced what type of movie this ended up being sort of you know, as as things started to sort of kind of change in the hollywood landscape and personally i actually don't couldn't see it being anything else but this to be fair because it, it just makes sense you know like you had sort of no obviously the corporation that had sort of their own self-interest uh at the, in the first movie uh and of course they didn't end up getting sort of what they wanted but obviously they were it was then sort of confirmed to them that there was this 
species, this alien life form on this particular planet. So it then made sense for them to, you know, with uh, Ripley's kind of like account of what happened at the start of the movie, for them to like maybe like potentially set up, well, like for them to set up how they can then go back to that planet or go back and sort of try to sort of you know, get get sort of um, smuggle one of these aliens essentially. So, and the only way to do that is to have some muscle because you know you've been informed that these sort of aliens are these aliens are super dangerous. It's completely wiped out a whole crew and there's only one survivor. So then it makes sense to have you know, um, sort of the best of the best or the elite soldiers to then sort of go in and actually tackle it and then try to sort of know, do a retrieve mission essentially and sort of try to retrieve an alien species, even though it's kind of disguised by the fact that, you know, they're sort of going to rescue this family, which sort of, know, um, which sent out the distress signal. So, yeah, I didn't expect it, but the direction of it, Pretty much, it, made, it made sense, especially like watching the movie, which is which is refreshing, you know, it, 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 it kind of shows that there was an idea and again you know the first one was done by Ridley Scott I believe and then obviously James Cameron kind of came in and built on that and you know just to kind of bring it to modern times slightly this is like a criticism that we have for sort of a lot of like modern movies where you have sort of these new writers new directors sort of working on older IP and adding their own kind of like spin to it and their own interpretations and it's quite often the case that they don't really understand or appreciate what was set up initially and then they just want to sort of kind of add there, you know, and there's, there's nothing wrong with adding your own flavor to it, but quite often when they're adding their own flavor to it, it's in disservice to what came before, essentially. So, this yeah. is an example of someone coming in, seeing someone's work, appreciating it, and actually building upon it and you know, adding more value to it. Adding to it as opposed to subtracting from it. Yeah. Or ignoring it or just scrapping it. Yeah. Um, I think it, this movie is like the like the masterclass in how to do a sequel, in my opinion. Like it 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 really expands the mythos, right, of of the original, and and it does. I don't think it contradicts anything that the first one says, but it kind of zooms out, right? It makes the world bigger. It makes the aliens more complete. We don't we're not just we're not not just seeing one. We're seeing an entire colony, stuff like that. Um, and I think that really that that really helps with the problem of being a sequel, right? Because the obvious thing would to do would have been Ripley, um, Ripley gets, um, you know, gets to safety, and then she she joins another crew, and then they they you know that crew gets killed by an alien again, and then she fights them again, right? That would be the obvious thing to do. That's what what, what just about every franchise would do, right? Um, and the fact that they just completely change the story here and just move forward and go into an entirely different genre, mm -hmm. uh, with a very different tone, and like towards the end it feels similar because they're still being hunted by aliens, right? Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's a very different movie. Yeah. But I don't get um you said that this isn't a horror movie, but the feel of this yeah. for me is feel like a horror movie. And I feel like that's a lot coming from me because a lot of movies which a lot of people consider as horror, I wouldn't consider them horror, I just consider them as thriller. Yeah. But this one definitely did kind of feel like it's not kind of it did feel like a horror to me because of the whole aspect of like, you know, the alien in an isolated situation, dark, scary, trying to survive. So what for you made this not, why wouldn't you classify this as a horror? So I think part of this is semantics, right? Because towards the end, it's a, it's a couple of survivors that are being hunted by aliens. Uh, it's scary and dark and violent. And you could say that in the last half hour, 45 minutes, it turns into a horror movie maybe. And that's a little bit semantic maybe. But to me, the reason it feels like an action movie first, first and foremost is that in like one of the hallmarks of horror is that the like the characters don't have any power right They're being hunted by something more powerful than them they don't really have any effective ways of fighting back they don't have a good way to escape so it's it's all about helplessness and like lack of agency and stuff like that and the marines have a lot of agency right they have the best equipment possible they are organized they not fully but largely know what they're walking into and it still all goes to hell right and but the tone of it and like like when when the alien starts hunting people in the first one, it's very improvised. It's very re irregular people being being stalked by a monster kind of thing. And in the second one, it's a military unit responding to a threat, right? Like their mission has failed and now they're trying to get out and trying to survive. And they're like they have a lot more agency. There. They have a lot more options. There. They have a lot more know-how. And it's not just because it's the second movie and they learn stuff from the first one, although that also helps that people remember stuff from the first movie, right? 
but it's it's just that the amount of agency and competence that the the characters have i think that changes it even when they're down to three people and they're being hunted like the fact that ripley takes like just duct tapes together four guns and goes into the nest to rescue a uh, newt and just destroys like a, like a dozen eggs and uh kills you know four aliens whatever that's not horror movie stuff and that's action movie stuff sure so so you like you can argue where exactly the line is but i think it approaches the same story from a different angle it's like a slasher movie where the main character is the police right mm. it's it's a different kind of story even if it is moving towards horror it's not the same feel and the same kind of uh spirit and that's I what i mean by saying it's not a horror movie I see what you mean. So what would you consider, not to kind of like drift away from the main topic at hand, so what would you consider Predator then? Uh, first one, in Predator you take every action hero cliche of the 80s, of the era, and then you take away their power. And then you, ha you have to be hunted by a monster. Mm -hmm. So so it's, it's leaning, I would say more leaning towards uh, horror because the characters in there don't have any, don't have any agency, right? They're just at the mercy of this monster in the same way that regular people would be. So, but I think I think that that like to 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 loop that back to aliens. Um, I, th I think that is how you keep that story fresh, right? That you that you approach the same subject matter, but from a different vantage point, from a different three eyes of different characters, and therefore the movie feels completely different. That that that's how I would how I would describe that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting, because I, I agree, it was interesting, it felt like it had more substance, rather than obviously just for, two, I don't know how long the movie was, maybe two hours and 30 minutes, rather than just seeing everyone get hunted till the very end, because that's pretty much yeah. how most horror movies are, right? When the main antagonist, or just made the main evils are just, you know, just slowly breaking down its victim until it gets to the final point, but with this one, it was like, okay, there was constant strategic battling if that makes sense do you know what i'm saying which i was about to say with the main actress uh what's her name sorry ripley ripley yeah yeah she i feel she was low-key badass i said badass <laughs> she was low-key badass yeah <laughs> i think is she like an iconic figure in like the horror genre as well or just the alien franchise Most, mostly science fiction i would say i'm i'm yeah. not sure she did a lot of horror straight horror no, but um, I'm saying from this like role. One of the sci-fi icons because of these movies. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like from this role, was she like a yeah, yeah, I could tell because I don't know her aura, just like the way that she would go about things in this film, it felt like it, she just it, she she like she, it, it didn't feel surreal. It didn't feel like what's the thing that what was what's the thing that you guys kept on referring? You know the beekeeper, and then you said um you kept on referring this term to his character because he pretty much had no flaws. Uh, that would be a Mary Sue. Mary Sue, cool. She didn't so feel like a Mary Sue. character, no personality outside of being being awesome, can do anything without justification, that sort of thing. Ripley is not that at all. That's what I'm saying. Like, she felt like you could see her growing throughout yeah. the film. Like, especially, obviously, in Alien 1, you saw her. She was someone that was very, um, like, into the rules, pretty much. Like, especially with the scene where she nearly locked out her own commander, her manager, whatever. I don't know what the terms used for a superior. But she even locked out her team member because they were infected. And to, to see her now, like, she's literally going against certain rules where she's telling um the... What's, what's his name? The one that was pretty much making all the rules where she was like you know the scene where she was screaming at him to tell them to bring them back bring them back in yes yeah, so you can kind of see how she was developing how she especially in her environment how she was developing in certain um, environments and she was like growing into that leader that's definitely something that yeah. i loved about her and yeah she was a badass man and i think that there was actually there's actually a really neat character arc here where she like you said at the start she's very about she's all about the rules she's very by the book she believes in structure right like um uh, she's the one who tries to enforce the quarantine rules and also in the first movie when people start talking like start being worried about their pay she's the one who said look it's in your contract you've got a right to this it's going to happen don't worry about it like she trusts in the system right yeah it's here she doesn't trust anybody right mm -hmm. she's already like she's already been screwed over by the company once and the rules didn't help her and now she's thrust into this new situation against her will essentially more or less um and the people in charge who, who make the rules and are supposed to enforce them are, co are completely useless. And they 
uh, they are making things worse because they don't know what they're doing, right? Like the corporate guy clearly has an agenda. The of the the like the the commanding officer is on his second mission, right? At this point, it's only survival, and you only like there's only one goal for for Ripley, right? And I think this whole like she, she's not really like she's she's not a soldier. She's probably the weakest person in the group, right? Just she's the only one who's not a like aside from the corporate guy, but she's the only one who's not a trained marine, right? And and she still just survives through sheer stubbornness and determination. I think one of my favorite scenes in the movie, on that level, is when she takes the elevator down to the queen's lair, and she takes a deep breath, checks her guns again, and then panics a little bit and then gets her shit together by the time the door the doors open mm -hmm. and that's our action hero right like the, like the big badass hero is going to save the day and, and she's afraid and she's going to do it anyway because it's, the, it's like she's the only one who can do it and there's nobody else who can help like stuff like that i think really works in this movie yeah i feel like sorry, I, I feel like what they really do well in this um in this movie and especially in her character it just kind of like certainly place those themes within there where they're not hitting you over the head with it because you can see it like at the start of the movie you know she's having panic attacks about sort of what happened in the previous movie she's kind of like it's it's noted that like she's having like sort of nightmares and this and the other waking up in cold sweats or whatever uh and of course when they have like the first encounter like like you were saying that like she's like or well, jennifer was saying that you know she's shouting for people to like kind of like get back and this and the other because of what she's seen before and this and the other and then you're then seeing you know as things are happening in the movie she's kind of like overcoming that fear and essentially like facing that fear um that she sort of had at the start of the movie and then like you said you know by the end of the movie she's sort of you know brave enough and she sort of you know is she you know she essentially is like going to like face the fear you know do what she can and so there's a few themes in here like under, underneath her because you know she's doing it for like the character new but then at the start of the movie you know they mention about her daughter which sort of uh, which she sort of like grew up and sort of, had a whole life and died while she was sort of you know, um, frozen in time or whatever uh, and it was actually a very neat parallel and what I'm sure we'll like touch on a little bit more um, about the alien queen or whatever that yeah, they, they yeah. kind of described her as in terms of like you know her kind of like her maternal instincts sort of kind of start to kick in with Newt or whatever and then you have that scene where she's sees all like the eggs being laid and again just like I'm like chucking a bunch of things in it or whatever but I thought it was really cool how they were talking about like you sort of know how like the aliens could be like ants and this and any other and how they'd be like a mother queen laying all these eggs or whatever and then it's then paid off later on in the movie but that particular scene where they kind of like have the showdown and you kind of see that there's kind of this, not a hive mind, but like you see that the queen has sort of you know, a lot of control over the aliens where she's kind of like protecting her eggs. You know, she can see that Ridley's got like the gun and flamethrower and whatever, and is about to kill her eggs. But then she's like, you know, ushering like all the other aliens to kind of step aside or whatever. Um, so there was like a really neat- She negotiates with the queen, like the, the queen and Ripley yeah. negotiate. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, very, yeah. yeah. It, it's just like, it's just like stuff like that, which, you know, you, you kind of find lacking in a lot of modern movies where, you know, you could say that they're like very one note, especially when they're doing female characters which fall flat on modern audiences. Again, it's not because you can't have a strong female protagonist, it's because you're not inserting those sort of, you know, those subtle themes, those sort of, you no sort of, no well, subtle qualities. Yeah, the little like character flaws, which then sort of, no, the, the makes the character go on a particular journey, which we can go on the, on the journey with the character, which makes her a lot more interesting, a lot more engaging, essentially. So that's what this movie does extremely well. One of the few problems I had though with this film was what you mentioned, Herbie, was the maternity traits. The only reason why I had a problem with it is because where did it come from? Because I did they did I miss something from the first movie? Or oh, sure. was it, it was. a thing where because like is she a mother? Because I get it, like cool, I guess she's a woman, she sees a little girl and you know like you know, just the feeling of protection is going to start to kick in. I get that, but I, I don't, I don't think Ripley having a child was mentioned in the first movie. I, and there may be a line where she says, "I'm trying to get back to my kid" or something. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think there is. Okay, I think so that, that is basically new. Um, and I feel I, like that theme was pretty much shown in the film, which obviously with the mama alien and then with her and the and the little girl. So I was kind of confused as to okay. Why is this, firstly, like, where did this come from? Why is there such importance 
in like why they put in so much em- kind of, not so much emphasis in it but you can yeah. tell like that's that theme is being explored but like where did that theme come from like the, there was nothing in the previous films that triggered that or told us that okay yeah. she's a mother or you know there's if you get what i'm saying i am i think so my interpretation is that it's not just about motherhood it's about motherhood and survival at the same time right the queen but where did mother- motherhood come from though as in, why did they? Yeah, yeah. It? I don't. I don't have a good answer to that. It just oh. might. It, I guess it seemed interesting to James Cameron. Would is maybe my answer. I don't think it follows organically from the first movie. Yeah, that's but my only problem. Like, yeah, yeah. It's it's it, it's more like she rises to to the occasion of being a mother figure for Newt, not because it's it comes natural to her, because it doesn't. Right? She's not good at it. It's she's not the warmest person. Uh, like she said that her, she that that she never met her child, right? Like because she slept through her her child's entire life. But it's not like being a mother is her uh, like is her calling or is her her personality or is 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 very important to her nature. But then she has to because Newt needs somebody, and because oh, so not, she has a child. Well, so so in, at the start of the movie, you are told that Ripley had a child who was maybe mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine when she was on the Nostromo. And then she slept through that entire life because she spent 60 years, whatever, in, in cryosleep. So her child is dead, or is maybe a very, is like in her 80s now. Can I say, sorry, sorry, just to interrupt you there. So they showed up, they said her daughter died at 60 years old, and they showed this picture of a very old woman that looked 90. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. hilarious. That they thought <laughs> that's, yeah. OK, so that makes more sense now, because yeah. she's technically like the child that she never got to raise. OK, that makes sense. Then, so, so there's different levels here, right? Like one yeah. of them is why make that a theme of the movie. And then there's why does Ripley feel an obligation to Newt? And then how does that mirror with the Queen? I think those are three different mm. topics. I think the reason why it's in the movie, as opposed to anything else, I don't have a good answer to. It doesn't really follow organically from the first one. It's not really in Ripley's character before. But it really creates this, uh, like this, this, it's it like kind of echoes with Ripley's survival character, right? Because in the first movie, she was responsible for her own survival. Like she wanted to help her crew and everything, but ultimately she wanted to survive. And here, somebody else needs her. Newt can't survive on her own, like not in the, indefinitely. She can't save herself. So and so somebody has to, and that somebody has to be Ripley because everybody else around her keeps dying. So that would be one one aspect to it. And then once you have that in place, like you you, you thrust this or this kind of obligation and burden on somebody who has enough problems and who is not a great fit for that job but nobody else can do it because there's literally every literally everybody else who could do it is dead and then once you have that in place you add the queen which kind of makes logical sense that there would be somebody laying those eggs right but then you have this mirror between ripley and the and the alien queen who are both kind of trying to keep their thing going right and they're willing to kill for it and they are and they get increasingly desperate over time like at the start the alien queen is very much in control right and then by the end, she's she's just like Ripley, is reduced to pure survival. Mm. So I think there's a really cool uh, parallelism going on here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, one thing... Oh, sorry, how are you going to say something? No, no, no. Yeah. Just a few one one thing that I felt found interesting as well, I think this was briefly mentioned, I don't know if it was by you, Herve, or Daniel, one of you, but um, was the alien's intelligence. Like, I, I, I don't think it was evolving, but, it, like, this movie kind of, like, started to reveal... Um, it revealed more on how intelligent that these aliens actually are, especially with that scene where the alien, the mama alien and Ripley are having that like, it's, it's like they came into um, an agreement that, okay, because remember when the alien told, because obviously she had the flamethrower and then the alien, and she could see that she was going to burn the eggs and then the alien told, the, a- the mama alien told the other aliens that were surrounding her to leave, as in like, you know, they told them to leave and then they left. And then yeah. while she was backing up, it was like, this day they came into an agreement. I was like, what the hell? They've got the brain capacity, capacity to do that? And it was, it was, a, it was a hostage negotiation, right? Like Ripley exactly. was in the ex-hostages, uh, ex-hostage. But it's also very instinctual, right? It's not like there's a lot of nuance to this. It's like, let me go or I kill the thing you care about. Like, that's very primal, very universal, right? So they, they, like the queen didn't have to be very intelligent to to engage in that in that dialogue, right? But... And, and it's already been established that the aliens are smarter than just animals, right? They're not just wolves. They're not just, I don't know what. And that was established at the end of the first movie, right? When the alien anticipated that Ripley would go to the shuttle and hid in the shuttle to, to ambush her. Yeah. Um, and here they do it again where they sneak on, where they realize the importance of, of the dropship. 
right? Where they stick onto the dropship and then they don't just start randomly causing chaos, they go to the pilot, which may, like, you can argue that maybe that's one step too far, but it's still aliens re recognizing what's valuable to their enemies, mm. or to, to their prey. Mm. Um, and, like, it, it, or, or like, and there was something where the aliens had disabled a generator or something, or a, or, or a signal relay or something. So they kind of realize when something is important and they know how to get an advantage. So like it's it's subtly building up just how intelligent these things are without just making them people. And the fact that they're not quite people, but also not quite animals, I think makes them really creepy because you have no idea how, what they're going to do. Exactly, exactly. And that's like the terrifying thing as well, like especially in the scene when they were coming through the ventilators. That scene, I thought that scene was brilliant. Go see. So uh, the Marines, did you say the Marines? Yeah, yeah, they're Space Marines. Yeah, uh, Ripley and the Marines locking themselves in and then they're looking at the like, what was the thing that they had? Um, that they that, had that detector, radar, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, and they were saying they're coming, but they can't see like, what the hell's going on. And then, and then he looks up like, and there's like 15 aliens. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, great shot. Well, that's, and then it just exploded. I was like, yeah, that's how you do this scene. That yeah. was amazing. And, no, and yeah. that, par again, parallels first movie, right? In the first movie, there was an alien coming down an air vent, but it was one alien. Mm. And here it's 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. So, so it, it, is, it is a callback, but it's also upping the stakes and doing something different. Mm. And I love the Marines as well. Freaking Hudson, that guy is hilarious. Yeah. And you see the parallel between him and... What was um, the second guy, um, Ripley, the one that survived at the end? What's his name? The one that got his eye burnt off. In this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the guy that's pretty much with Ripley. So it's only him, it's Ripley, um, that the little be, gal. Right? Sorry? It would be Hicks, right? Is it Hicks? I think so. I'm not sure. I think but, it's Hicks. And, and, but we know, we know who you mean. Yeah, yeah but yeah, he's the way that, like, obviously Hudson started off confident, cocky, macho, and obviously Ripley started off with a guy with no No, no. And then Hicks started off with a guy with no experience. And then to kind of see them switch, see one deteriorating and one elevating. And the way that Hudson was deteriorated was always freaking hilarious. The way, the way he kept on saying, man, come on, man. <laughs> he said, we can't yeah. go there, man. I was like, this guy's hilarious. I would have thought it was good. I thought it would have been corny, but it wasn't. Like, for me, yeah. like, okay, the problem that I have with old movies, sometimes things feel a bit slow and still. So I remember the, like, when Harvey said, okay, he didn't really like the girl, like the little girl's acting because it felt a bit, I'm guessing, bland, right? So, and I, I feel like this kind nice. of like, and I feel like sometimes that's like a universal problem when it comes to old movies. It just doesn't feel like there's energy in where they're acting. I'm not trying to say for them to be theatrical, but sound like you're actually the character, right? And I feel like sometimes that's what they lack. But mm. with Hudson's character, he like, you could tell he was active, but he was funny. Like he was like the energy boost that was needed in this, like amongst the Marines. Cause I love like the whole relationship dynamic. Like, I just love like, you know, the relationship that man dynamic in like when it comes to uh, different personalities like in the marines yeah. i think it really worked well but yeah hudson like just seeing his character slowly deteriorate was hilarious like he was like the guy he went out like a warrior though i can't lie to you but still even when the way he died was funny <laughs> but yeah it, he he was one of my favorite characters in this film yeah and, and the marines kind of work on a few different levels too right like they are they are they are very like you said cocky they're very sure of themselves they don't really take the threat ser seriously but that's also a parallel to the crew in the first movie right because they're just kind of real people in this world and they just happen to be like these highly armed professionals, but they're still people. Mm -hmm. And then over time that that kind of gets stripped away and then by the end they're just just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like the first crew, they were also professionals and they were more maybe more technical, but they, by the end they were also just reduced to survival, right? So there was a lead. Uh, one form that as well wasn't there a line when they were kind of like discussing about like the alien life on this particular planet and they were like saying how they hadn't come across anything like this previously and obviously they've been in space for so you know yeah our x amount of years so it kind of informed their kind of misjudgment of the situation and them sort of being a little bit sort of cocky and not really taking it seriously as well which i thought which i thought was good um the the line was something like something like we, we surveyed the indigenous life and there's nothing like this on this planet yeah. and Rick says well that's because it's not indigenous it's it's not from this planet, right? <laughs> so it's like there's people being way too sure of of like the theory and the expertise, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's some scientist somewhere who uh, like did, made a model or did a survey or something and found nothing. Therefore, nothing exists. Mm -hmm. uh, 
right? It's 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 again this whole thing of institutions being useless. Yeah. Uh, another callback I liked in this movie was, you know, in the first movie where the guy turned out to be a robot, and obviously <laughs> he was you know kind of invested in sort of, or he was sort of carrying out the corporate sort of no um, uh, corporate's mission in terms of sort of no bringing back alien life form at all costs essentially. So then you then like then fast forward it to this movie where she's on a mission with another robot and is immediately mistrusting of him because of her previous experience. And then obviously over time has to like learn to kind of build that trust with him to the point where he eventually sort of saves the day. And I feel like they played it really well because like when you're first introduced to him, he's not like awful, but he's like a little bit off or he's a little bit cold. Yeah. So we're kind of like, oh, is it like this situation again? And then again, it makes you like think about like the wider universe is like, are all these robots just sort of kind of serving the corporate interest as opposed to sort of not having anything more about them, uh, essentially. So I yeah. that was, again, just like another, it's just, it's just like another neat bow in terms of like building out sort of Ripley's character and sort of kind of like having a little bit more sort of to her and then sort of adding, adding to the movie. And also the wider world, right? It's not like every robot is an enemy or is evil no. or is dangerous, right? Yeah. Like they're ultimately people in some in some sense. Mm -hmm. And like a lesser movie would have done the betrayal by robot thing again, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe in a lesser franchise that would happen in every movie. And every yeah. time you see a robot, you see or you suspect somebody of being a robot, you say, okay, there's going to be a, going to be a, going to be a betrayal, and then there is. And mm -hmm. the fact that Bishop acts logically. And according to his goals and personality and the events, but he's never he, he's never just another Ash. Like right? mm -hmm. is is he's he's clearly similar, but he's also not the same character. And they think about okay, what makes the most most sense for the android to do in this movie? Mm -hmm. um, and because of because of the first movie, we kind of know what the rules are. We don't need to introduce like the white blood kind of th thing anymore. Or we don't really have to introduce much about there being robots, right? This time it's not a twist anymore. This time we know there are robots in this world, and Bishop still behaves in a consistent way with that. But then the story goes somewhere else in a way that holds up when you watch it again. Well, with his character as well, I think like with like the whole insertion of the robots, I think it's very like it's good. The reason why it's good is because it kind of adds to um, the threat. It adds to the whole threat of danger, right? Because with like. And what I've realized with a lot of these robots in these um when in Alien, Alien One and Alien Two, they take very long to respond. So there's moments of where they give you that, like just that sinister mystery behind them. So you're like, what are they thinking? And are they gonna turn on me one day? Do you know what I'm saying? So like even with um what's his name Bishop's character, the robot, like there was one scene where I think someone asked him to do something. I don't, I don't know if it was I think it was a Marine, and then he just looked at him took like five six seconds to respond i was like oh what the hell is this guy thinking like, is he is something bad gonna happen there do you know what i'm saying so just having just having those moments of silence that these robots do a lot it kind of yeah like i said just adds to the whole yeah the feeling of you know is threat is the threat outside or is it inside and you don't know and obviously ripley obviously she's having that conflict like not even internal conflict because she's already you know she's already and she's already come across a robot which is bad so of course she's going to have a preconceived notion that this robot that she's working with is also the same so but yeah for the rest yeah. of the crew just for for the viewer it's like okay now it makes us question if this robot is good or not and it just adds to the whole frame it adds to more in it, ca it keeps us more engaged and more in yeah. keeps it feel more interested it's also not just a cheap twist right it's not yeah. just oh you thought this was the bad guy so huh i'm smarter than you right it's <laughs> it, it makes sense right it, it still yeah. makes sense if you've not seen the first movie and if you have, then it's a neat surprise, maybe. But it's not like the movie's not playing tricks on you by by kind of thinking that there's something off about Bishop. And they also don't make a big reveal out of it. It's just see, it's just everybody's open about the fact that there's an android on on board because it's 60 years later, and mm -hmm. this is no more common common now. And like like things have changed, and he's not the same kind of android. And and no, it's so common that nobody even thought to mention it. Mm -hmm. right? So there's no there's no conspiracy here. Like the first time there was a conspiracy, right? Like Ash was hiding in the crew, and he is not hiding; he's just there. So yeah, yeah. like it and it, it develops the the world, right? It's not like there's always a secret android. It's just androids are affected in this world, and they get used differently depending on the situation. Actually, this is this is one of the questions I had when I was watching the movie because I know they said that there was like X amount of years sort of in the future. Yeah. And of course, this is only set in like the 1980s. So I was like, how are they going to advance the technology 
in this movie to make it feel like it's 50 years in the future. Uh, and if I'm honest, I didn't really like pick up on it too much that it felt like, you know, 50 years in the future. Obviously, like what you've mentioned there makes a lot of sense. And that, again, it's it's subtle. It's not, you know, hitting, hitting you over the head with it. But like what you said there makes sense. But is there any other examples of that in the movie? Where I've got it like five. Sense? Okay. So, was, so, yeah. uh, so every, every, pretty much every piece of tech in this movie was established in the first movie. Mm. But it gets better. So the drop, like the, the um, cryopods, look nicer then they, they, they look more sleeker they look sleeker they look more modern waking up from cryo sleep is shorter so in both movies you have a scene where the crew wakes up from cry cryo sleep and then kind of gets dressed and, ha and has food and gets ready for the mission and i think in alien I, get, I didn't time it but it feels at least twice as long mm -hmm. and so that to me so that that's a need because the first the first time we see it it's more interesting so we can't do the same thing again but also, it reinforces this idea that this is six, this is six years in the future. The technology is more advanced, and so going into cryo sleep and coming out of it is more routine than it was in the first movie. Mm -hmm. For example, that's that's one interpretation. The motion sensors are now standard, standard equipment. In the first one, they kind of MacGyvered something together, and the second one is just standard st standard issue. Um, and few few more like this. Uh, the dropship. The, in both movies have a scene where you go down, where the crew goes down to the planet with a dropship. Second one is about twice as fast. Okay. And no one here is scary. The ride is not as bumpy, right? They're joking why they're doing this, right? Mm -hmm. So that also indicates that the ship is more advanced. Going down to a planet and coming back up is much more routine than it was six years ago. I, I think those were the examples I wrote down. So everything, like there's not a lot of new stuff in this, right? The guns are new, the guns are bigger and 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 whatever else but like the, the core technology that makes up the story is the same as it was in the first movie but it's better and it's more and more importantly it's it's not just more powerful it's also more routine highlight um, moment a real quick highlight yeah. moment um bishops i don't know if he's dead but when he got snapped yeah. into half i was not expecting that and that was so brutal rick it now i was like yeah. damn but yeah sorry i had to just mention that one i should have but we, sh we should have expected it because like I know they had the whole like kind of like chase thing when they went up the elevator and stuff like that, but it didn't really feel completely concluded that particular fight between um, Ripley and the Queen, the Queen Mother, uh, and also just to insert here as well, like the Queen Mother design, everything about it was like completely menacing. Like it was like really, really, really well done. Um, also, like a le no logical next step from the first one, right? Like it's clearly an alien, but it's bigger and different. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, well, I didn't. I didn't like that they did the whole thing where the Queen Mother hid on the ship again. I was like, okay, that, yeah, yeah like it's, maybe, it's one ending too many, maybe. Yeah, I, th I think maybe you could have thought of something different. You know, again, again, the shock factor was there when she, when he, you know, she put her, you know, her tail through Bishop, and a victim in half, which was very that cool. was crazy. That's like, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, it was very unnecessary. <laughs> no one needed. No one needed. Um, and also, uh, in both movies, the android dying is the most graphic and gruesome, right? Because it's not blood. It's not a real person, so it's yeah. it's okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, but very different circumstances, right? Very different. I, all the details are different, but it's clearly the same thing again. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, I, I just okay. kind of they chose something different for ending the Queen Mother. Maybe they could have like ended her on. Maybe they could have like outsmart or something like that i don't know they, they could have done something something different yeah 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 it's it's i i, I think i like the parallelism that this time a ripley came prepared with the auto loader and uh, it was again the alien on on the ship go, uh, going out the airlock but so it's a basic the same basic beats but it's different mm -hmm. it's bigger it's more polished ripley is not doing this for the first time anymore she, now she has a plan or more of a plan so I like it on that level, but yeah, it, it is. It does feel a little bit like we're doing the same fake out again. You think you 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 fled, but then the, the alien made it onto the ship. That that that's maybe one part that's not ideal. How much how much of a side track can I take us on right now? Because I've got a question about a completely separate sure. franchise where they sure. do the same thing in two different movies, and obviously this is again an area where you have expertise, and I'm like. Was there a difference, or was it like a bad choice in in Star Wars, where they blow up the Death Destroyer in A New Hope, and then they also blow up the Death Destroyer uh, in the third movie, which was Return of the Jedi. Of the Jedi. Yeah. So they did the the thing about doing the Death Star again. Yeah. It's essentially, 
Because you're saying it worked for you in this movie. Did it work yeah. in that movie? And this is complete sidetrack in it, but it just yeah. kind of popped into my head and I was just like curious. So, about in, in the case of Star Wars, it's, it's not great. Mm-hmm. But I think it works because of the thematic level that the Empire will just keep doing this in, uh, forever unless yeah. unless you do something about it. Like, you can't just... Like, they have infinite resources and you can't... If, if It doesn't matter how how many of their assets you destroy, there will always be more. And so there will always be another Vesta. And so they will just keep building them until you take out the Emperor because he's the central nervous system of the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. And... I think Alien might be a little bit similar, where on the one hand, yes, it's the same thing again, but also it shows the growth in Ripley, right? The fact that she's not just running away anymore. The fact that she comes back for Newt and actually picks a fight with the alien, right? Mm -hmm. That is growth, right? And so if you put put a character in the same situation twice and they react differently and they have a reason for doing so and, and it makes sense given what you've watched them go through, I would call that good writing. Yeah. Right, that that it's not just different for the sake of being different, or it's not just a rehash, but it's it's putting Ripley in the same position twice, and she's not the same person the second time around. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's how I would explain it, or that's how I would defend it, because yeah. like when you, when you watch it, it's like oh this again. But I think if you take the two movies together, uh, I think you can uh, like that like there's a there's there's an arc in between. Yeah, and that's why. No, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about the first movie and how much she was like panicking and like sort of. Like, yeah. She was like formulating a plan, but she was like, you know, completely panicking, you know, really like scared of the situation. Whereas in this one, she's a lot more stronger. She's like sort of kind of like distracting the alien from sort of going after Newt and stuff like that. So yeah, you can see the growth in her character. So actually, mm-hmm. it does work a little bit more for me. I, I think, think that's why it doesn't really bother me. Like if that wasn't there, then I would say, yeah, did you didn't you have any better better ideas? Mm-hmm. But. The fact that it all hangs together this way, I think, I think saves it for me. Yeah. One last question before we go: uh, Did you like the Queen? Did you think this was a good addition to the to the law? Uh, I think I've already said that I I loved her, the Queen's design. Uh, again, it, like like we mentioned, it's you know very logical that you know you have all of these eggs so that there would be sort of something or someone that was sort of planting uh, these eggs. And again, it kind of like builds onto sort of you know. That these are not just sort of mindless aliens, even though it's sort of shown sort of in a few different aspects within the movie itself. But then it kind of like then expounds on it when you're seeing that the Queen Mother has an element of control over sort of some of these other aliens as well. So for me, it sort of served its purpose in terms of sort of building up the building up the world, adding a little bit more sort of mythology to sort of the aliens um, as well. Yeah. For me, they come across a little bit more like a wolf pack or something like that. Like they're clearly pack hunters and there's like one in charge, that sort of thing. That's how they came across as. Like like calling her the the queen kind of makes, like obviously invokes ants. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and you know, they also kind of build a hive. So I guess they're kind of in between a pack of wolves and a hive of a hive of a hive of ants. Yeah, I I, I think it's 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 a it's like a logical addition. It, It makes sense. It ups the stakes without changing anything. Like, like you're not changing what the alien is about. You're just zooming out and saying, okay, what happens after the alien has won? That makes it work and that makes it interesting. For me, it was just um, it was just refreshing seeing where they come from because I think I've seen like the other alien movies which I've seen. Well, I haven't seen the obviously for people who are wondering, oh, this guy just said you seen the alien movie. He's lying. They're lying. But no, no, no. I've seen the movie that came out in the 2000s. You've seen the ones. Yeah, but I haven't seen the ones that obviously came out in the 80s or um, 70s. I think that's when the first one came out. Yeah, uh, 76. Yeah, yeah, so I haven't seen those ones. But yeah, to kind of see, so yeah, to kind of see where they actually come from was just refreshing. Um, I had no issues with it. Actually, she, well, that's actually the first time I've, I've ever said that um, a, um, you know, the monster looks ugly. Like, just looking at the mother, like, Jesus. Like, I think even her mouth, I don't know what the hell was in her mouth, but it looked like... Another looked... mouth. Yeah, but, no, but besides, I think there was something else besides that one. I don't know what the hell yeah, it was. Yeah, it's being acid. Okay, yeah, but it looked like, like, yeah. little balls of circles or whatever, but it just yeah. looked... I think it was with his teeth, but, but yeah, okay. yeah, it, it looks creepy. It, it's it's weird. You don't want to, want to be anywhere near it. 
Yeah, so the design of her was like on point, but yeah, she just looked disgusting and brilliant. <laughs> and yeah, just seeing that, and even the way she was giving birth, I was like, Jesus. I can imagine what the audience's reaction was like back in the day when they're seeing that, yeah. because you know what I'm saying, like I've seen a lot of disgusting stuff from movies, but that just looked disgusting. So yeah. Great yeah, sorry, even you mentioned there about the the acid that sort of you know, kind of played a role in the movie a few times, and you can see that when they're like spraying their guns and this and the other, and you see like the acid splashing and sort of the effects of it. I just thought that was like a again a really cool addition to add to it in terms of you know you've got these marines that are like so gung ho, but then that kind of works against them when they're sort of uh, going against the aliens. Yeah, and there was even a scene where um remember the scene where the commander said they're not allowed to use their guns, and then they were like, "What the hell are we supposed to do then? Insult them or something like that?" That kind of like yeah, yeah, that kind of like I wouldn't say for no, I wouldn't say foreshadowed it, but it kind of like showed that okay, how the hell are they gonna beat such a threat? Because that acid was like an accidental threat, but it still adds to the threat. You get what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like killing these aliens is borderline impossible in a way. So. Yeah, that's how yeah, that's, that's you're really awesome. like it's 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 a bit like zombies in the sense that it's easy as long as you're in control. Like if you're far mm. away, if you have the right guns, it's not that hard. Mm. But sooner or later they will overwhelm you and, and you will get tired before them. Mm. Like you will let your guard down, you run you will run out of ammo and then they will keep coming. But I don't know, does anyone have any last thoughts? Oh yeah, last thoughts. Last thoughts. Yeah, for me for me this is all a borderline perfect movie. Like it's it's just everything that a sequel is supposed to do. It builds on the mythos, mythos that came before without invalidating any of it. It makes the universe bigger. It makes the characters more well-rounded. It it moves the story forward instead of just being being the same thing again. Like in my view, if you're a filmmaker or a writer and you're, and you're trying to do a sequel, do it like Aliens did. Literally, just yeah. the last point there. I was going to say this movie is literally the blueprint of how to do a sequel, essentially, and how to sort of yeah. know, uh, move your story forward in sort of a meaningful way and sort of adding again again like adding to the law and sort of adding to the mythology of it and just you know just keep taking your characters on a really good journey and you know it's, it's not even just about you know how to do sequel it's you know how to do a human protagonist it's how to sort of know how to add sort of you know, themes and sort of you know uh and all that stuff within sort of the movie as well without kind of like being overwhelmed there's like so much that this movie does right that has been lost in modern cinema so I feel like people need to go back to... And you would think in a world in which you people are doing nothing but sequels, mm -hmm. you would think they would have learned this. Yeah, but I, I feel like I feel like it's not sincere, the sequels that we're getting at the moment. I, I feel yeah. like we're getting sequels as a means of making money as opposed to, you know, this instance here where the sequel was made because, yes, the studio probably wanted to make some money off of, off of the IP as well um, because it was like seven years later. But at the same time, they brought in someone that had a lot of like love and care for the original work and wanted to add to it in a meaningful way. So they did this crazy thing where they just tried to find somebody who looked at the first movie and said, I have an idea for where the story goes next. Mm -hmm. And then they hired that person and let them do it. Yeah. Crazy. And this goes against, this completely goes against, so, you know, what we're getting at the moment with, you know, things like Marvel and stuff like that, where you have like this big expanded sort of universe where, you know, you're having to plan like 10 steps ahead or whatever like that. You know, sometimes, you know, not everything needs to be that. Sometimes you, and so, you know, this actually is a bigger fly in sort of the sequel to Star Wars trilogy, actually, where they kind of like had the original movie, brought someone else in who just completely yeah. shit the first movie. And then the third person came back and tried to retcon sort of everything that happened in the second movie, where, again, you know, in this example, you have someone that's adding in sort of you know, uh, more meaningful, sort of better ways. Yeah, Ryan Johnson should be forced to watch this movie. This movie once a month for the rest of his life. <laughs> just, just. That's, that's being too kind. To him. That's that's being too kind to him. <clears throat> well, for me, I'd say um, I'd assume that everyone behind this film had a fun time making a film because it looked like a fun movie um and it was a fun movie um so I'm i don't really watch... pay much attention to production stories like that they're like this apparently everybody hated each, each other on the set oh and yeah, yeah there, there's like stories about how james cameron didn't get along with anybody and so it's not like these were like true nerds you know following their passions these were just professionals doing their jobs well Wow. Well, you you couldn't even tell. Well, I might have to dub um dub down on um 
my comments about like you know performance being stale and stuff because the way the way I saw the film it seemed like they were having fun. I get it, like it was a movie, but still like it just seemed like a fun movie to make. Like certain scenes, it just yeah, it just felt like a fun movie to make. But damn, I was not expecting that. So I take back that comment. Know, it hurts, but that's 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 largely the story. Okay, well, um, even though they had a terrible time, I had a, a good time. Um, it was a fun movie. I I do I do see myself watching this again. Um, I'm still not fully convinced. Fully, like I don't want to lie, I'm still not fully convinced that this is one of the greatest horror movies ever made. But it is definitely a good horror movie, and the second one, second film, is definitely a film that I would watch again, and I believe I will watch it again. So and I think you film, can watch it on its own, like you don't have. Like it yeah. yeah, definitely. This was definitely my favorite alien movie so far. Um, in terms of in comparison to the first one. Um, yeah. So this was good, good experience, and I had a good, I had a good time with this one. Very good time. All right, Alien Romulus. No pressure whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so my my big hope for Alien Romulus is that so Alien Romulus is set between Alien and Aliens, right? It's it's kind of an interquel, or you know. Don't love that word, but that's what it is. And I really hope that that will add a third good movie to the Alien franchise because it's like it's 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 kind of walk, talking the talk. But let's let's see if they can actually like if they do what like like if they bring the ethos of aliens to Alien Romulus, then it could be something great. And well, which basically means have an idea for where to take the story and then do it and then do it well, uh, which sounds obvious, but apparently it's not. I know this is not a remake, but it feels like it's going to be a remake. Romulus. Yeah, from what I saw in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 like it's alien stuff. It's it's a direct a derelict space station. There's experiments going on. It's familiar pieces, but it's up to them to assemble them into something interesting. Hmm. How did the latest one end? What was the latest one? I honestly have no idea. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, if it isn't, wasn't Alien Covenant the last one? And I think that one crashed and burned. I'm not sure. I didn't really follow it. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch it because from this trailer, even though I am looking forward to watch it, it does. It still kind of does feel like it's just going to be like a remake with, you know, their own spins to it. But it doesn't seem like there's going to be an evolution in the storyline. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's going to be like anything else interested. So I, I, for the, me, I just feel like it's going to be... Aliens kind of means it can't move forward. But um, that there, there, there are ways of, of making that work, I think. So we'll yeah. know in a few weeks. Well, I'm still looking forward to it. I just think it's going to be one of those junk food, no, those junk movies type of film. But yeah. But hi, uh, thanks guys. <laughs> um, thanks guys for tuning into today's episode. Um, we hope you've enjoyed. Um, yeah, just have a have a have a yeah, Let us know your thoughts in the comments. You know of what we discussed. If we missed anything, if we you know if there's any extra details that you know we need to be aware of of this movie, let us know in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want us to do the other ones, like as far as I'm concerned, we've done the good alien movies. But if you want us to do the other ones, to let us know in the comments as well. Definitely. If you hate us. Like. <laughs> apparently, because they're, apparently they're not good. So yeah. Yeah, I heard about that as well. I'm intrigued to see that. I don't know why I feel like it'll be good, but we'll see. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, we will catch you next week. Au revoir. Ciao. Bye.